it says it right there, the fundamental theorem of calculus. I mean, it's kind of a big deal. So let me tell you in short what this says, and then we're going to, we're going to use an example of position and velocity to do this numerically, and then I'll derive the full thing. Okay. So the fundamental theorem of calculus is something that you use all the time. You don't even know it. So this says, suppose I have some function f of t, and I integrate from 0 to x. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And x is some variable amount. So I get a function. If you have a number up there, then I get just a number. The integral is just a number. This says that if I do this, and then I take the derivative of g of x, the derivative of g of x with respect to x is equal to f of x. So the derivative undoes the integral. So the integral is the antiderivative. That's kind of a big deal, right? Because we always think of integrals as sums, and we think of derivatives as slopes. So you wouldn't think the slope is the opposite of the area, but it is. Okay, so let's imagine <clears throat> that I have a car. Let's talk about the derivative first. So I have a car, and it's moving along in one dimension. So I have x data. So suppose if I collect x as a function of time, data like this, so there's data points for x. I'm just making up stuff. And now I want to find the velocity of that as a function of time. Well, how do I find the velocity? <clears throat> the velocity is just the slope here. So we could do this. Let's say this is uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, and so forth. And these are all the same delta t intervals separated. Well, what if I want to find the slope at x3? One way I could do that is just to say I'm going to take, uh, I'll call that v3. It's just going to be the slope right here. So the slope is going to be x4 minus x3 over delta t. That's, my, that's how we get the velocity. Now, it's not perfect, but that's what we have. That's called a forward derivative because we're looking forward in time, but it's going to work fine. Let's go ahead and do this numerically. So I'm, I'm actually going to do this in Python. I'm going to make a graph of position versus time, and then from that calculate the velocity versus time. Now, in order to generate the data points, I am going to cheat. I'm going to use this x as a function of time. I can, we'll come back to this function a little bit. I'm using uh, negative t cubed over 3 plus t squared. That's the function I'm going to use to generate data points, and then we're going to plot the data points. We're going to use those data points to find the velocity, and then we'll come back and do the derivative the way you would think we would do it. Is that the function we're using? Yep. Okay. So let's switch over to Python. Come on with me. Come on, let's go to Python. So here's my Python. Let's just go ahead and make a graph. G1, is that big enough? I think so. Equals graph. Uh, let's give it a title of um, moving car. X title is going to be time. I'll leave off the units. Uh, and I left off the units in my X function too, because it clearly it can't be T cubed. It has to have a constant. But no, no, don't worry about that. Y title equals X, and let's give it a width. 400, height, 200. Okay, now I want to plot something. I'm going to use g dots. So f1 equals g dots. I said curves. Color equals color dot blue. Okay, now I need to start with initial x. I need a final x. Let's go from uh, x equals, start with x equals 0. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this. Let's define x as a function of, of time, as a function. So I'm just going to return. Uh, t cubed over 3 minus t squared. That way I can just give it the value. <clears throat> now, what did I do over here? I want to do it the same way I did it. Okay, let's do it while t. So t, I'm sorry, I was doing x. t is 0, and let's do dt of 0 0.2, so a big step. And let's do while t is less than 3. So oh, where did my thing go? Okay, so while, while, oops, sorry, while t less than 3, 
uh, what I want to do is just plot x and t. So f1.plot, my t value, my x value is going to be x of t. See, isn't that nice? Okay. And then I need to increase my value of t. t equals t plus dt. And let's run that. And there you go. Why does it look like that? Oh, I got it wrong. Minus. And that's plus. That's what I want. Okay, so there's my position as a function of time. Let's make a velocity as a function of time graph from this. So over here, what I'm going to do is to make another graph. So if, if you want two graphs, um, if you put them in order like this, I'm going to just copy these two. I'm going to call that G2. It's still a moving car, but this is going to be T versus V. And let's make this one uh, F2. And let's make this a color red. So if you put them in order like this, then it will, it will do it the correct way. Uh, so now what I want to do is just go through again, and I'm just going to plot. Uh, I'm going to calculate my velocity and plot that too. So in the same loop. I don't even need to make another loop. So, so where am I going to get? Okay, there we go. Okay. So down here, I'm going to, I have my x, right? And I want to find my next x. So I can calculate the velocity. I'm going to call it vt. It's going to be equal to the current position, which is, well, I'm going to take the next position, which is x of t plus dt minus x of t and all of that divided by dt. Hopefully that looks really familiar, right? Now I'm going to plot that. F2.plot t vt. And there you go. So there's my velocity. So I can get the velocity, and that is the slope of this graph right there. And that looks kind of nice. I like it a lot. Of course, you can make dt get smaller. We can just do that really quick. Let's change dt to 0.01. Sorry, it was the tuning fork. And then I get a nice smooth curve for the position. I get a nice smooth curve for that. So there you go. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's write down the actual derivative of, of what you would do in the limit that this thing goes to zero. I'm having, a, I'm having functional difficulties. I haven't made a video in a couple days, and, and I, I just all messed up. Okay. So we can write this, the formal definition of the derivative, the velocity as a function of time is going to be the limit as delta t goes to zero of x of t plus delta t minus x of t, all of that over delta t. And we've done this before, right? When you take a limit like that, as delta t goes to zero, we get a derivative. You've done this before. And if I have x of t looks like this, negative t cubed over 3 plus t squared, we can use the power rule. And if I do that, I get velocity as a function of time. It's going to be negative t squared plus 2t. And if you want, you could plot that in the actual graph, but that is indeed what it is. Okay, So that's the derivative. Now suppose that we have this and we want to find the position. Suppose I record the velocity as a function of time, and I want to find out where it traveled. So let's write these up on the side, out of the way. x as a function of time is negative t cubed over 3 plus t squared. Velocity is a function of time. But we're going to pretend like we don't know that. And there we go. Ooh, look at all the mistakes I'm making. Uh, it's going to be equal to negative t squared plus 2t. Okay, so suppose I just had the velocity data, which we're going to use this, and we're going to make this in a graph. Like that. So this is velocity as a function of time. And I want to know how far the car traveled. I want to find out the position. <clears throat> so again, v1, v2, v3, v4, and so forth. Well, 
Suppose that I want to find out how far it traveled during this time right here. If it was moving at a constant velocity, then I could say v is delta x over delta t, or delta x is v delta t. So here's my delta t, and this is my v. So that gives me the area of that little box. And then I can just do the same thing right here, the next area, the next area, the next area. And you'll notice that it's not completely the right shape, but it does indeed work. So the distance traveled is the area under the curve, and as my points get closer and closer together, I get a better approximation. Okay, let's go ahead and plot velocity as a function of time, and I wanna, I wanna make these little bars, because I think they'll be cool. Okay, so let's do that. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go over here, remember how to do this. So I can make a new program, and I'm gonna make a graph. Uh, graph, title is again, I'm going to be moving car, and then I have uh, x title is going to be time, y title is going to be equal to the velocity, and then width, 400, height, 200. Okay, got that. Now I'm going to make my, my dots for my velocity, f1 equals g dots. Let's make them red again. Color equals color.red. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and, and plot this. So I'm gonna define now a function v as a function of time, and I'm gonna uh, return my function, just because it makes it a little bit easier. Return uh, t squared minus two times t. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, good. Now t equals zero. Oh, that was negative. Why not do that again? Negative plus. DT equals 0 0.2, while T is less than three. Uh, I'm just gonna plot my data points. F1.plot, T, V of T. See, I like, I like that, it looks cool. And then T equals T plus DT. So they're just gonna plot the points. Here we go. Same thing. Now what I want to do is to plot a bar under each one. So I'm going to use uh, something called GV bars. So GV bars is a vertical bar graph. So I'm gonna plot a bar graph for each one of these points too, and we can see what that looks like. It's gonna be great. And now I'll represent the area, just, just for fun. Okay, so F2 equals GV bars, uh, color equals, um, color dot, I'm trying to think what color I, I want this. I, I guess I could do red. And then do I need to do something else? Uh, yeah, I do. I need to pick, oh, um, I need to pick my width of the bar. So it's called delta. Uh, so let's write this as, uh, let's put this down here. And then delta is the width of my bar. So delta equals, now if I put it at point two, it might not look perfectly. Let's just try that first. I'm gonna put delta as dt. So down here, I'm just gonna plot f2.plot t v of t also. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I think that's fine, just the way it is. So now we can see the area under the curve. I'm kinda of happy with that. That's pretty cool. Okay. So, how would I do a numerical derivative? Well, what I'm gonna do, I wanna find out where it is at this point, which I already know the answer to, right? Because I can go back to my previous program. But I'm gonna just take the areas of all these boxes and add them up. So let's do that in our code. So I'm gonna call this x final. And I'm gonna set x final x zero, equal to zero. And then each of those boxes I'm gonna to add to this value. So what I'm gonna do is to say, x final equals x final plus the velocity times the width of the thing. So it's gonna be v of t times dt. And then at the end, we can print that. Print x final equals x final. 
and it would be in meters or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And I get 0.28 meters. Now, let's go back to our other graph right here. Notice that my final x is actually zero, but I got 0.28. So I didn't quite get the right answer because I made that approximation that delta t was large. And so that's not correct to assume that the velocity is constant over that. But it's good enough if I want to make the time interval smaller, I can do that. So let's just make d, see here's what's nice to say, 0 0.01. And there you go. Now the area looks a little weird, but I get something that's very close to the correct answer. Okay, so we can kind of already see that if I want to find the area under this, I get the position. And suppose I want to go to some just generic time, t prime, okay? So I already know that if I want to find the area under this to t prime, that would be the position because I, it's, it makes sense that this is the opposite of position. The derivative of position gives me velocity, so going backwards would have to be the antiderivative. That makes sense. But let's go ahead and prove that for all functions because it's kind of a big deal. So suppose I have this, g of x is equal to some integral from t equals zero to some variable x, f of t, dt. So this is an important thing, right? Because I'm integrating, you can barely see that x, to x. I'm integrating over the function t, but the last value, the other upper limit, is a variable. So I get a variable function at the end. That's kind of important. Now suppose I want to take the derivative of g of x. So the derivative of g of x, dg with respect to x, is going to be this. Uh, and let's scooch forward a little bit at h, so I'm going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. That's our formal definition of the derivative. <clears throat> well, I can write g of x plus h up here. So g of x plus h is going to be equal to the integral from t equals 0 to x plus h of f of t dt. And then I can write g of x, we already know that, is that. So what's going on here if I go from t equals 0 to x f of t? So let's just draw this out. Suppose I have this as my f as a function of t, and I'm integrating. So here is x. That's my integral. And then this little extra piece has a length of h. And I'm taking the limit as that goes to 0. Well, the difference in these two areas is just going to be that area right there. That area has a, is like a box. If it's really, really skinny, it's like a box that has a height of f of x, right? Because I put in that value right there, and a width of h. So the, int the difference of these two is going to be the integral of t equals 0 to x plus h f of t dt minus the integral of t equals 0 to x f of t dt, all that over h. Well, that's just going to be this area right there. So I can write that as equal to f of x times h over h. The difference between those is f of x h, that's the size of my box, and then I still have the h on the bottom cancels. So the derivative of g as a function of x is equal to f of x. So if I take the derivative of this, I just get f of x. So that means that it undoes the integral. So undoing the integral is an antiderivative. It's a really big deal because we don't want to take the limit as delta x goes to 0 as an infinite sum. Instead, we'd like to just deduce what that uh, what function would I take the derivative of to get that? And that's how we integrate. So an integral is an antiderivative, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Hope that makes sense.